Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is the story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, my friend and I quit and left the boss to sort out that sh. The second story, boss did not pay us a salary, we sued and won. The third story, landlord did not return the deposit and paid me almost three times more. The first story is, screw me, screw you, I want my money. This is a revenge in multiple parts. About 30 years or so ago, I was 17 and about to head to university. An acquaintance through my parents' church offered me a job working with them, learning to be a pizza chef. Awesome. I'd need money for uni and I'd already had a stack of jobs, so working hard was nothing new for me, but being a cook certainly was. My experience with Italian was limited to Pizza Hut so I accepted that at the start I was a liability, not a help. I started work, and to start with I worked free. Cool, but when it got to the point about three months later that I was opening by myself and taking whole shifts by myself, well, I should be paid. I screwed up all my 17-year-old courage and confronted the owner. Let's call him Nick, because that was his name. He huffed and puffed and tried to tell me how terrible I was, but I stood my ground and now I'm on minimum wage. Not bad in my eyes at the time. I worked there for another three years, through most of my uni degree, often putting in 30 hours contact at uni, 30 hours at the restaurant, and 30 hours of study. It was hectic, but it just became the norm. Towards the end I became a lot more savvy and started researching labor laws, keeping records of my pay packets and end of year tax receipts, and realized Nick and other co-owners were screwing me. I wasn't on the correct rate, they weren't deducting tax correctly, and a couple of other accounting oversights. By then I was working with my at the time mate, let's call him girlfriend creeping d-head. Girlfriend creeping d-head. It was Sunday night, the place was packed, I had tickets all the way down my line, and girlfriend creeping d-head and I were pumped. We had a new boss, new boss, who just bought into the business who thought he was the king of the world because he was now a restaurateur, right wanker. But after years of having to stay back to cook pizzas on world cup nights for the boss's friends, or Christmas, New Year's Eve etc. I was sort of used to the grandstanding chest puffing behavior. The night in question the new boss would not let me start the second pizza oven. Think a two tier oven, I was only allowed the top tier on, because it cost too much. So here I am oven full, two pizza chefs running full speed, and were only falling behind, because one oven wasn't enough, and it was starting to cool down from being so full and open so frequently. New boss gets a couple of tables of mates in. Instead of just asking us to cook some comp garlic bread, or whatever, he starts loading up trays himself and putting them in the oven. Not the worst crime, but because he had no idea what he was doing, every 30 seconds he'd open the oven to check them, cooling the oven down even further, potentially ruining the food we had in there, and slowing us down measurably. I had the head chef chewing my A out as his food was ready to go, but my food on the same tickets wasn't. It was hectic and not fun. This garlic bread bandit SH had to stop. Me, new boss, stop effing with my oven. If you want garlic bread, just ask. I'll get it done immediately for you. New boss, what? Huh? Me, you're messing with my oven. You're cooling it down and we're too busy for this SH. Just tell me and I'll make it. New boss, okay? Did he do it? Nope, he kept on. Cue the same conversation another two times. The last time I told him I'd blow my stack if he did it again. You see where this is going. He did it again. Now after being consistently ripped off and abused, so many kooky stories from that place for three years, my time was up there anyway, and this was the time to do it. I looked at girlfriend creeping d-head and said, yo, we out of here? He looked back and simply said, yup. We stripped our aprons, and in front of the entire restaurant, pizza kitchen was in full view of the entire restaurant, threw them on the bench and told new boss, we quit. All this, all these tickets, all the food in the oven you've effed up, and your mate's sh garlic bread, this is all yours now. Good luck. Then we walked out, got some coffees from the baristas, sat in front of the pizza area and watched him absolutely flounder. He had no idea what he was doing, and there was literally no one else there that could help him. We could see food coming out from the kitchen, but the pizza on the same ticket was taking 20 minutes or longer to come out. Tables were hopping mad. We could hear the grumblings all around us. I'll admit it was D-ish, but undeniably satisfying to behold. That's not the pro-revenge though. The pro-revenge was that I'd been stealing my timesheet every Sunday night photocopying it and then replacing it Monday mornings. I'd been doing that for over a year. I'd also told girlfriend creeping d-head to do it. Monday I walk in and Nick was there and was furious at me. As I was walking in you could see his chubby face turn bright red as he bellowed across the restaurant floor. 
What the F do you think you're doing here? Get the F out and never come back. Me, Nick, we've got to talk. We can do it here or we can do it in your office. But trust me, you want to have this conversation privately. Nick, fine, you come with me then, desperately trying to gain the upper hand back, and he storms to his SH little office out the back. Nick, BS, 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 about how he's going to withhold pay and a whole heap of other illegal hot air. Me, you done? Good. Here, read this. I hand him a printout of an Excel spreadsheet, a stack of photocopied timesheets, a stack of photocopied pay slips, printed copies of the wage awards, all of which detail the amount he's ripped me off for. Me, you owe me six grand. I'll take cash or a check now. Did I mention he and the other bosses had just been simultaneously raided by the tax office and that they and the business were all on thin effing ice? Yeah, bad timing for Nick the D. Nick spluttering, wringing his hands. But, but, I can't afford it. Look, I'll show you my bank accounts. As he physically starts scrambling to find his bank statements. Me, Nick, I literally don't give an SH about you, your bank accounts, or your situation. You owe me six grand today or I take all this to the tax office and all the other relevant government departments that will be very interested in this. Because Nick, I have a feeling if you're doing this to me, you're doing it to other staff here as well, huh? As for not having the money, well, again, not my problem. But you just bought a new $60,000 Pajero. So if you have to run that down to the car yard and sell it, again, I don't give an SH, but I get six grand today. He literally teared up a little. I'm not sure why. Maybe through frustration, rage, or just being screwed by someone he thought way beneath him. But seeing a grown man who's abused you for many years cry at your hands is a pretty beautiful thing to behold as a 20-year-old kid. I got a check that day for my whole six grand. And yes, it cashed. But the best was walking out of his office with girlfriend creeping D-head standing there, who deadpan just looked him in the eyes and said, Nick, we need to talk. And in they walked in to do the same thing. $10,000 he lost that day. The best part? A few of my friends at the restaurant caught wind of the fact that I had enraged him and asked what it was all about. I let them know how they were being screwed, how to take copies of all their timesheets, and where to find the relevant laws. I know of several other people who did the same thing to him. And that was how I left the hospitality industry and started working in my field of study, never to look back. The next story is, be a D to me and I'll make sure you lose millions of dollars, your home, car, and your reputation. So this happened about 10 years ago. I used to work for a technology company in a government incubator. It was a building that helped start up companies by offering very cheap rent. One of the companies was an animation company. The owner was a complete D-bag. Whenever you would run into him, he was always a complete D. Anyone that knew him hated him. It was a small company, only four to five staff members for the first couple of months. Honestly, I don't even know how he survived that long. The animators were terrible. And by terrible, I mean, what the F did I just watch terrible? But this guy was an amazing salesman. He managed to sell himself and his company to a hip-hop group in California. Being from a fairly small city in Canada, Halifax, this was a big deal. It made the business sections in the newspapers, and he even won an award for top 50 CEOs in the region. The new contract landed him millions of dollars with around 1.6 million up front, but he didn't have enough staff to take on this new animated miniseries. He immediately hired approximately 20 additional animators. All naive students right out of college. After a couple of weeks of his new staff still wasn't being paid, I knew a couple of people that worked there including one of the original five, who was receiving a small paycheck, and asked her what was the deal. She told me that he said he didn't have any money, and that the money was coming soon. He somehow convinced most of the animators to continue working for free. He insisted that if they stuck around they would all become rich, and it would make all their personal portfolios look amazing. Considering most of these kids had no experience, they didn't quit. Once I found out about his claim of having no money, I contacted a local magazine. It's a political magazine that likes to report on businesses and politicians that are corrupt. They emailed me back, and I told them everything I knew about this animation company and what the owner was doing. Well, the magazine did some digging and published an article about the owner. After their investigation, they had learned that the CEO had in fact received $1.6 million up front for the project. But instead of investing it into the company, he spent it all on himself, including a new home, valued over $500,000, new cars, etc. You can only imagine what happened next. Pretty much every employee quit the day after the article ran. The group from California sued him shortly afterwards because they invested that money and got nothing back. The CEO was taken to court. He was sued by seven of his previous employees, $31,000 plus awarded each employee. He lost his home, car, and was now seen as a joke in the industry. After all this, he moved to a different province, but things got worse. He had to file for bankruptcy, claiming $248,000 in liabilities. One of my ex-employees recently got a job at the same magazine. 
I asked him if he could look through their archives to see if the information had leaked to them is what caused their investigations. Sure enough, it all started because of my email correspondence with their editor. The last story is, SH landlord and housemates get their share of crap. Back in my uni days, I lived with two crappy housemates, A and M. When we initially moved into our property, it was a complete mess. I mean, we could not access one of the rooms because it was full of crap from the previous tenants. An old rusted bicycle, lots of stained linen, dirty clothes, shoes, and lots of other random crap. The landlord, as I mentioned, was actually quite reasonable, and despite the initial mess when we received our house, he did do repairs and maintenance fairly on time. He was a contractor by profession, and he had quite a few projects going on. A&M decided to take the other two rooms. They arrived a bit earlier than me, and left me to clean up the mess. The year was quite uneventful, with A's girlfriend moving in and refusing to split the utilities fairly, and M consistently being late in paying his share, thus resulting in a couple of utility disconnections, which ended up costing us more to reinstate. At the end of the year, I moved out earlier than them two, and cleaned up my room and all the common areas. I videoed all this with a newspaper of the day to prove the date, and sent it to my landlord, LL, expecting my full deposit back. Two weeks later, A and M move out, and predictably leave all their crap in my room, and leave the common areas completely dirty. LL decided to withhold our full deposit, stating the mess my two D-head mates left. Now, during the year I was in charge of communicating with LL, and therefore a and did not even have his contract. I informed them of the deposit being withheld, and they started complaining about me being the bad guy. You know, because all the crap was in my room? I emailed them the video and told them I'll be taking them to court to get this sorted out. This seemed to scare them, and they ended up sending me my full share of the deposit. I was still not done with LL, as we had severely requested him to clean the place prior to moving in. He was, however, reasonable, so I decided to call him and sort out the issue. I told him about the mess prior to us moving in, and him withholding our deposit was not fair on us. He started laughing and told me to show him proof. I knew he got me. Around this time, I was preparing to rent another apartment myself, and after completing the paperwork and paying the deposit, I got an email from a deposit protection scheme, informing me of the deposit that they held on my behalf. I decided to look further into it, and realized that landlords, by law, were required to pay the deposit into a protection scheme. The penalty for this was three times the amount of the deposit. I called LL again and asked him for the deposit scheme documentation. He started sweating it and told me he'll send me the full deposit back immediately. I told him I wanted three times the amount or I'm taking him to court. He asked me to meet him at the house and after some back and forth, we settled on 2.5 times the total deposit on condition that I don't take him to court and that he does not inform A&M about this little settlement. So I ended up with 3.5 times my initial deposit, and 12 years down the line, A&M are none the wiser. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new videos come out.